yeah. So now I would like to uh, to continue that journey on like learning and see the new improvement. And uh, let's listen to uh, one of the icon, I think, in, when we think about DevOps, Donovan Brown, who will be sharing new updates, the greatest updates uh, in the DevOps people and the static web app. So let's listen to that. Hey everyone, I'm Donovan Brown, Partner Program Manager at Microsoft on the Azure CTO Incubations team. It is no secret that I'm a huge fan of Azure DevOps. That's why I could not pass up this opportunity to share the news that Azure Static Web Apps now has support for Azure Pipelines. This will allow you to add static web apps to your existing pipelines or have the Azure portal create one for you. Let me show you how this works. To get started, I visit the Azure portal and create a new resource. Then I search for Static Web App and select it from the dropdown. From the Static Web App page, I click the Create button. I need to select an existing resource group or create a new one. I'm going to create a new one for this demo. Next, I enter my name for the Static Web App, just like before. Only now, I can choose Azure DevOps as the deployment option. Selecting this option, I then select the org, project, repo, and branch for the application. Next, I select the stack I'm using, which is Vue.js. This will allow me to configure the details for the project. Now I click Review plus Create. Once the validation is complete, I click Create. First, the Azure portal creates a new static web app. Then, inside my Azure DevOps project, a new pipeline is being created that will automatically deploy my code each time I push changes. Once the static web app is created, I can visit the site. Notice, this is the default site because my pipeline is still running in the background. I can see the pipeline by clicking the link in the Azure portal. While the pipeline is running, let's look at the definition. This is a standard YAML definition using the Azure Static Web App task to build and deploy my code in one step. Now that the pipeline is complete, I can view the logs to locate the URL for my site. Scrolling to the bottom of the Azure Static Web App task logs, I can see a link to my site. Clicking it shows my code running. Every time I push changes, they will be automatically deployed for me. This is great to get started, but I can take it one step further and create my own pipeline. The default pipeline builds and deploys your static web app in one step. However, when I create my own pipeline, I can separate the building from the deployment. This allows me to perform additional tasks like linting, running tests, and deploying to multiple environments. Before I create a new pipeline, I will disable the one created for me. To do this, I select Pipelines, and then select the pipeline that was created for me. Using the More Actions menu, I select Settings. From there, I select Disabled and click Save. Now, I can create a new pipeline using a file I created earlier. I click the New Pipeline button, then select Azure Repos Get. Next, I select the repo for the project and then select Existing Azure Pipelines YAML file. The file name is azure-pipeline.yaml and is in the root of the repo. I click on Continue to load the file. Let's look at the definition. First, notice I added stages. The first stage is where I install the required tools, build the project, and package the output as artifacts. In the next stage, I deploy to a staging environment and run some playwright tests. Because I built the site myself, I need to configure the task so it does not try and build it again. Notice on line 70 that I set skip underscore app underscore build to true. This lets the task know it does not have to build the app for me. Also notice on line 72, I set deployment underscore environment to staging. If the deployment environment is not set, it defaults to production. Finally, I have to provide a deployment token, which I will take care of in a minute. The next stage is a manual intervention. These are great when I want to give people time to review the changes before they continue down the pipeline. Once the approval is given, the final stage deploys my code to production. When deploying to production, I configure the task to skip app build, but do not provide a deployment environment so that it will default to production. To deploy a static web app, I have to supply a deployment token, 
which I can get from the Azure portal and store as a secret variable in Azure Pipelines. Returning to the Azure portal, I click the Manage Deployment Token button. Then, I click Copy to Clipboard. With the token on the clipboard, I return to Azure DevOps to create a variable to hold it. I click the Variables button, then click New Variable. I enter the name, deployment underscore token, then paste the value from the clipboard. Finally, I check the Keep This Value Secret checkbox and click Save. With the variable in place, I can now run the pipeline. The pipeline will run and stop at the manual intervention stage. Opening the Deploy and Test stage, I can see the link to the test results. Clicking this will show me the results of the test run against my staging environment. Before I approve the manual intervention, let's use the logs to see the staging environment for ourselves. Notice that the URL contains the word staging because this is not production. The staging site looks good to me, so let's go approve the manual intervention. I click Review and enter an optional comment. Then I click Resume. The pipeline will now deploy the site to production. Once the pipeline is complete, as I have done before, I can use the logs to navigate to my deployed code. Recently, I've been investigating Web3 development. Smart contracts are code that live and run on the Ethereum blockchain. However, to interact with those smart contracts, developers create web frontends. Distributed applications, or dApps, are the combining of smart contracts with web frontends. Most of the frontends are single page applications, also known as SPAs. These are the exact type of applications Azure Static Web Apps was designed to host. For my final demo, I want to show you how I was able to use Azure Static Web Apps to host the front end of my DAP, which is created using the Truffle Suite from Consensus. I also employed Infrastructure as Code, a DevOps best practice where you define your infrastructure as code instead of going to the Azure portal. Let me show you how I was able to do this. First, I create a bicep file to deploy my Azure Static Web App and output my deployment token. Thanks to this file, I no longer have to visit the Azure portal. I can configure everything in code that I was configuring from the UI. From my pipeline, I deployed the infrastructure using Bicep while I simultaneously built and packaged my SPA and smart contracts. I used Truffle to develop my smart contracts, so I installed it as part of my pipeline and use it to compile and migrate my Solidity code. In the final stage, I deployed my DAP frontend into my Azure Static Web App as before using the deployment token automatically returned by my BICEP code. This prevents me from having to store the token as I did before. Even if the deployment token is reset, the pipeline will automatically use the new token on the next deployment. Visiting the site of the app I just deployed, I see that I'm prompted by my MetaMask, which is a Web3 wallet to connect to my DAP. I can't tell you how excited I am to see the addition of Azure Pipeline support to Azure Static Web Apps. I'm looking forward to seeing the incredible things you build.